So this morning we are getting some of your questions and concerns answered by Jacksonville Mayor Lenny Curry. We asked you to submit those questions to us on Facebook and Twitter. Mayor, good morning and thank you for good being morning. here. Good morning. It's good to be we here. We had 259 at last count questions. <laughs> Obviously, we can't get to all of them, but I did divide them up in kind of calculating how many questions specifically related to certain topics and, and probably not a real huge surprise to you, JEA crime and also some downtown development questions we have. I want to start with JEA if we can. Um, specifically, Felix, Terry, and Paul, uh, viewers seem to think, based on what they are hearing, that you will somehow gain from a potential sale of JEA. Felix says, would you somehow be financially benefit with selling JEA? Terry, how much money are you getting? Paul, how much money will you be paid? How do you respond to that? Will you that's, fin that's, financially that's, that's benefit a, at all? Absolutely not. That's that's completely outrageous. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I know that JEA. That, that's got to be social media because that's the kind of nonsense that happens on social media. Well, as we have seen, um, this has been an ongoing process now for several months, if not longer. Um, there is a lot of information out there that does get spread by social media. We have been following this, this issue very closely. We know that you have said to us, in fact, the last time that you were here specifically, that you want to leave it uh, up to the voters, you know, if that sale if does it gets, happen. If it gets to that point. If it gets to that point. And, that's, and by the way, that's one of many options. Yeah. The issue with JEA is that they have a growing customer base, declining revenues. They have legacy liabilities and plant Vogel. Uh, they've got uh, is strategic issues on a go forward basis, so they they will not they, they they will not exist successfully as they exist today. So multiple options need to be looked at. One is recapitalization. The other is potentially changing the state and city charter so they can get engage in other businesses that they can't currently engage in because they're a governmental entity. Uh, all options need to be on the table. This is a discussion about the strategic future of the utility. If it ever does get to a recapitalization or a privatization, it will end up in the voters' hands. It may not get there. Uh, that said, Councilman Matt Carlucci has said, in fact, that he believes that CEO Aaron Zahn should resign because that the public has basically lost trust. Do you agree with that decision we, or that, that we, request? We, we have a city charter that says that the independent agencies are independent and that the board of directors select the leadership and the CEOs of those organizations. That's the structure of the JEA. The board is responsible for selecting the CEO. Um, if but the you if, appoint if the board. I appoint and city council confirms. Mm -hmm. So w me, myself and the city council have installed the board of directors on these independent agencies. Uh, if, if, if a council member wants to change that, they can change the charter. I'm going to abide by the charter and allow the board of directors to do their job. Uh, let's move, um, if we can, also uh, on to crime. We just had another shooting. Uh, this one is in the Pine Forest area. A two-year-old is in the hospital with critical injuries. Uh, a number of questions about these from our viewers also. Michael writes uh, on, po on Facebook, you know, what are your plans on reducing crime in the city? Darius says, what are your efforts to reduce crime specifically within our minority communities? What kind of assurances, if any, can you give them? Because uh, we're, we're, we're now breaking some records. In fact, this month alone, we've had 40 shootings. June tied that record for, not shootings, but yeah, 40 shootings as well. There's real concern about safety in our city. Look, my frustrations are as high as anyone else's, which is why since the day I took office, I've invested in public safety, starting with creating the Kids Hope Alliance, which uh, creates after-school programs, summer jobs programs, year-round jobs programs for young people, which is why I gave the sheriff uh, the resources that he needs to hire 180 police officers, which is why I've invested in ShotSpotter and other technologies that track down crimes when they've happened, which is why I've invested in and brought Cure Violence here as a pilot program this last summer. Um, so, and, and we've seen some success with Cure Violence. In fact, this Friday, violence disruptors from Cure Violence will be available to the media to talk to them about uh, the violence they've disrupted and the shootings that they know they've specifically stopped since June. How closely then are you working specifically with the sheriff, considering the statistics that I just mentioned? In fact, we've had um, 140 homicides since the beginning of this yeah. year. At least 115 of those were murders. That is more than what we experienced it's last terrible. year. It's going up and not necessarily going down when it comes to homicides. So the sheriff, me, the sheriff and the state attorney, uh, we talk regularly, we collaborate. Most of the things that I've invested in, uh, the Nibin technology, which can tra extract a casing down to a gun, that was because of the time I've spent with the state attorney and her suggestion of how, uh, how, how much success we could have there in, in tracking down a crime when it's happened. So we, we're collaborating on this. We're all feeling this. We're all in this together. And I'm going to continue to take their expertise and provide them the resources that they need, but at the same time invest in our youth, after school programs. 
When I got into office, there was a summer jobs program, which was a good program, mm -hmm. but I heard there needed to be more jobs. We expanded that summer jobs program from just government jobs to the private sector. I then heard that young people need jobs year round to keep them out of trouble. We've expanded that jobs program now to year round. So what I'll say is that we're going to remain vigilant and stay the course and keep working. This is a community effort also. Absolutely. Uh, and that's one of the things I know that we have heard so routinely, particularly if it's uh, crimes in particular in neighborhoods as we've been seeing. Let me move on to, um, so that we don't run out of time, to downtown development. Um, specifically concerns a couple here. Obviously people asking about the landing, Lot J. We may not be able to get to that this morning, but the reality is is that, you know, uh, there's been sort of this promise of revitalizing right. downtown Jacksonville, right? And so there are some concerns when people are driving around the area. They don't see the entertainment that they'd like to see, or they see a lot of abandoned buildings, as Correct. an example. Let me bring up Alec. He says, our cities like Charlotte, Raleigh, have booming downtowns and development, bringing in large corporations, which I imagine can only benefit the local economy. Why hasn't that happened here? What are you doing to change that? Well, first I'll say it doesn't happen overnight. Um, we have readied my four years downtown for major development. Uh, Vice Stars relocated corporate headquarters. There's been others. We're working on other relocations and expansions. But that was a big deal to have Vice Star move their corporate offices to downtown. Um, we've had uh, Sweet Pete's, uh, the Chop House. We've had other historic buildings. And there's another list of them that are happening that maybe aren't visible to people when they go down one street downtown. Yeah. But I will say where you have vacant buildings, uh, when they get into a scenario where the taxes are delinquent uh, and, and they're not kept up, uh, we can put a lien on them. And I would say we have a plan in place to so stay tuned to continue to see us go after more spaces that aren't being properly, properly utilized. The Jacksonville Landing, when I got into office, what I continued to hear specifically and why I would be in interviews with the media was somebody's got to change the landing, change the landing. And, some didn't like it, but we took possession of it. We are knocking it down, and there will be a request for proposal out sometime next year to see what the market can bear there, what can be built there, what can be done there. So it doesn't happen overnight, but Jackson, downtown Jacksonville is happening. The uh, Christmas tree, and we're going to have yes. more on that. As we invite you back, I know yes. you're here at least once a month, so I do want to talk to you more about the landing. But I know that the Christmas tree lighting ceremony, let's, let's end on something positive, tonight, right? Tonight, it's from tonight. 5 to 7, okay. you can come to my office. You can visit me in my office. From about 5 to 6.15, at 6.15, I'll go down with my family, me, Molly, and the kids. We'll light the Christmas tree at 6.25. Santa Claus will be there. <laughs> Any kids that are watching, Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus will be there. You don't want to miss this. All right, fantastic. <laughs> and, of course, you can watch the lighting ceremony here on air at 6.25 here on Channel 4. Mr. Mayor, thank you for thank being you. here. I do appreciate it. Always good to have you.